family dining with fast and friendly service. From gourmet pizza and barbecue to creative pasta and seafood, it's time to make the 466 Pub and Grill part of your family's regular indulgence. With an extensive menu full of delicious foods and a vast variety of beer and wine, the 466 is the spot to watch the big game or catch up with friends. Sit down, take out, or have your next family function catered at the 466 Pub and Grill on Route 1 in Danvers. It's Monday Night Football on the best day of the week! I love Mondays! This week, the Skins, they travel to Philadelphia to play the Eagles in an NFC showdown! Mr. Monday lost last week. No big deal, okay? I want to do Muay Thai in your face! Muay Thai! On your face! I'm taking the Skins on the road, getting the points. I would never bet against the front officer of the Redskins, Todd Klein, Chief Commercial Officer! Philly fans suck! I hate Philly fans! Take the skins! Take the skins! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Take the skins! Screw Philly! Get back on the win streak with Big Jesse! Monday! Oh, 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 oh. What a crowd tonight! Welcome to the I Love Monday show. I'm Carlo, Mr. Monday, and this is Machine Gun Mike. What's up, buddy? How are you doing yeah. tonight? Terrific. What about the guy we got coming on the show tonight? Unbelievable. Paul Gilligan. Do you guys know Paul Gilligan? Yeah! Woo! yeah. This guy is a legend. He's a legend. Absolutely. Local guy and everything. Yeah. Uh, Malden. Malden, Medford, same thing. What's better? Malden or Medford? You can ask me. Medford. Depends on what kind of drugs you're looking he might, for. He might, be, he might punch me out when he comes on, but definitely Medford, for sure. Uh, Kluski, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm terrific. I'd like to give a shout out to John's Roast Beef. Whoa. Best yeah. guy. Best guy. Keeping the Monday show fed every week. We got sliders, chicken wing. Tasso takes care of us. He, he looks younger every week in those pictures. I mean, I hate to say it. He's a cocky he, he, bastard. He looks like the guy he, from Soloflex. Remember the commercial Soloflex? With the, the bowl thing? Oh. All ripped up. I think it's James River Barbecue Soloflex. Sauce. No, he looks like the Under Armour model. The guy, the, the, he looks like the Under Armour guy. You can yeah. see his heartbeat through his shirt. He paid us big money to he paid us big money to say this. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm challenging the audience tonight, all you people watching the show. I mean, we need people liking and sharing. You guys are watching the show. You're not even commenting. We get twenty thousand people watching the show. I know. Sometimes fifty thousand, and you have a hundred comments. Get and, involved. And it's like ninety nine. One person just ninety nine comments. Say something. Ladies My and wife. gentlemen, get unlike involved. the rest of the world, we want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. What's the matter with you, chicken shits? <laughs> I mean, seriously, a bunch of chicken shits. Yeah. You know, say I suck. Fun. You know, say I suck, say type something. I mean, say Mike sucks. We all know he does. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Mondays don't suck. What do we got, Klusky? Uh, you guys want to go into the Pats game from this week? or? No, I thought we were going to talk about Miss Monday. Oh, Miss Monday? We yes. can talk about Miss Monday all day. Miss Monday is a beautiful Portuguese woman. She's an entrepreneur from Tampa, Florida. Uh, her name's Ashley, and she loves nature and animals. She's an independent woman. And now uh, let's congratulate her for being Miss Monday. Look at her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's actually a sweet. I talked to her on the phone. She's really nice. And she loves Mondays and loves what we're doing. Speaking I'm sorry about that. We were supposed to talk about the uh, Patriots. <laughs> That's, my, That's fault. my fault. I hate talking about the Patriots. Well, I was trying to skip that over. I mean, seriously. Let's talk about them. Let's like, talk about them. Well, let's talk about that game yesterday. Good game, huh? I'll tell you. You were all excited about it. No, I'll tell you, you why. You were all excited listen, about listen. this game. When, when it's said and done, everything, you put everything aside, what you got to think about is they make good teams look mediocre. Right. They really do. Right. It's always all who's going to win. It's a third quarter. It's tied. Then what ends up happening? Minnesota's a good team. They're a real good team, but they shut them down. They just know how to win. Cousins is, I love that guy as a quarterback. He's, he's great. All right. He's good. What's, he's all right. He's he's overrated. Good. That's a lot of money they gave him. What's wrong with that? I'm just saying. He's, For, he's, what's he get, $40 million? Something like that. Not a year, though. $40 million. He's, he's got, But he's all right. You know what I mean? He's got a lot of weapons. He's no Tom Brady. They got more weapons than the Patriots, for sure. What are you talking about? I'm just saying. They, they get healthier, younger. Edelman's better than any receiver they have. I don't know about that. That kid Thielen's throwing up numbers like no other right now. I wish he was a Patriot. I know. He's good. No he, respect. He fits, no, he fits in yeah, that system. Yeah, but no respect for Belichick. You see him? Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. That Belichick was the, told him to go. Even Shannon Sharp, who hates the Patriots yeah. and who I dislike, was all over that guy for being a wise ass to Belichick. He was. So he thought it was like no. He's passionate. The kid's passionate. Well, you got a problem with Edelman? Oh, that's all right. I mean, he's, he's better than Gronk this year, that's for sure. But I'm just. He's saying. better than the best tight end of all time. Oh, well, here we go. The best tight end. Are you serious right now? He's the best tight end of all time. Better than Tony Gonzalez. 
Yeah, I mean, stats are stats. Tony Gonzalez, the most receptions, most touchdowns, most yards. He played 27 Second. years. It doesn't matter. He still averaged almost 90. The guy played 27 years. He averaged 90, almost 90 receptions a year. 87. 87. Right. Mike. Exactly. <laughs> Who's counting? Mike, the best tight end. You're talking about Ashley, the lady from Portugal that just wore our oh, T-shirt, yeah. right? Oh, Lily. What a tight end she has. Yeah. Absolutely. But but honestly, you don't think Gronk's like top best tight ends know. of all time? It's me top four, five, three, but nothing. Who's better? You could tell you who's better. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Gates. Gates, maybe. Witten, uh, uh, not uh, really. If he Witten, how I'm do you even say, throw I Witten? I said not there? really. I said not really. But Gonzalez is way better. That's like that's saying a good one, Tasso. That's a real. That's good like one. saying that Bo Jackson's not the greatest athlete of all time. Deion Sanders. Of course, of course, you're gonna go against me. Sorry, right. Josh Show, do whatever you want. All right, all right. Gronk's <laughs> the best. Whatever you want. <laughs> Can I ask a question? I don't know a lot about football, but I caught a moment of the game where Tom Brady ran for a first down. And then, like the face he made looked like like a six year old autistic kid smiling for a school picture. I don't. What, what, yards, is he? Yards. I thought Tom Brady was cool. He's not cool. Yeah. No. <laughs> he did that for his be, his best friends thing, which was really great. Oh, am I slamming a charity or something? Yeah, right it's now? a great charity. No, he did that for the best friends. Oh well, that was mean. Best best luck to them then. <laughs> that was really mean. Sorry. Right, let's just go right to shoot the shit. Child of divorce. Oh, this one. Newlywed sue Bahamas sandals for thirty million after the butler molested the bride. New Jersey <laughs> residents Ashley and Jeff Jeffrey Pascarella are suing sandals for thirty million dollars after the butler they were signed for their destination wedding snuck into their room and fingered the wife to be. This happened at two a.m. the night before the wedding. The accused butler, whose name was Moral Adderley, crept into the room That's a fake name. and he used Mrs. Pascarella's vagina as a mitten while her husband was doing God knows what in the bathroom. Adderley was caught in the act and fired from the resort. The bride had been diagnosed with PTSD as a result of this. The wedding went on because they didn't want to disappoint the 70 guests. And uh, they got rid of Moral Adderley, who I'm sure is at just some other resort right now. That's yeah. That's I can see if he, like, he grabbed her ass or something. That's an inside job. No, he put the lime in the coconut. He, he, he yeah. But to get that far with a girl, to get that far. And let him it's third base, Mike. We can say it. We're, but we're so on. these newlyweds. She knew it was coming. I blame these newlyweds because wow. they want to be big shots and have a butler and go to a foreign country and have their wedding. Have it in Hoboken, where you come from. I have it back in New Jersey. Yeah, get fingered by an American. Have it at a Howard Johnson's. Right. They have to go to this yeah. island to have this w this lavish wedding. Maybe it's acceptable. But they want Let me be acceptable. Key. They give I this guy the key. key. They give him a key. So it, he didn't it's the delusion of marriage way. where they're going to celebrate like them living together forever in a certain kind of like normalcy by a destination wedding in a tropical island that they'll never go to again. Klusky, I mean, <laughs> this thing is screwed up. Are you upset by it? Like, are you scared? Like, you guys have kids. They're gonna grow up. They're gonna go on honeymoons. Are you, are you worried that the butlers there are gonna? My daughter's not ready. He's gonna start windbreaking my daughter's. Back. I did not. I, Plus, you guys I would been never wish so that. good. Now you're starting yeah, with them. I thought you that's had. Uh, that's that, not. That's an inside job. I don't care what you said. What anybody says. Mike, was this I the night before Mike, the wedding? I didn't mean anything by the sandals gift certificate. <laughs> was this the night before the wedding? It was the night before, so the husband didn't even get it yet, and this guy was kind of like, he was like, what's that thing that you put on a baseball bat when you're warming up to get a, a lighter swing on it? Donut. The, the, he was like the donut there, but he put his finger inside it instead of uh, around it. Why are these two people who are getting married spending the night together the night before? You're supposed to wait and like consummate the marriage the, the next day. Bad luck apparently happened, right? Could you think of a worse scenario? He was awake, the husband, too, wasn't he? I husband? believe he had the Montezuma's uh, maybe revenge. Maybe he hired the butler to do it. That's what I'm saying to you. Now you're agreeing with me. Now no, I'm not agreeing with you. I'm just going by facts. So it was the butler with an index finger. <laughs> so she's suing for $30 million because she got felt like, well, how did they molest her? Was, uh, he did something with his finger to her? He put it in, man. I don't even know how. Like, you ever try to like sneak into a buddy's room to take a 20 out of his wallet? Imagine no, the wallet Lindgren, was no. halfway inside of his asshole. Yeah. That's only what Lindgren this guy did. That, buddy. That's like <laughs> we should hire this guy to like work with Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. This guy's a ninja. But thirty million dollars. I mean, she must have been kind of you know smoking chick to sue for thirty million. The guy felt her up. She wasn't bad. There's a picture of her out there. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. There was a GoPro in the bathroom. Woman farts, then <laughs> pulls out a knife and threatens to gut the shopper who complains about it. Shanetta Yvetta Wilson squeaked out a dirty brown fart at the dollar store in Donny Beach, Florida this past Sunday. The gaseous preview of shits to come offended other customers that were in line with her. This led to the verbal dispute that ended with Shanetta pulling a knife and threatening to gut other patrons. So, so this is a fight. Yeah. It's embarrassing. You they're fight. in line. It's embarrassing. You fight. No, but maybe the guy, maybe she thought the guy fought it because she, some people don't know they fought. Oh, they, oh, 
No, they no, may, she might not know. She's more we fight. We fight. I wonder if there's anyone in the world who's never fought it. They're about to pop right now. If that's the case, <laughs> do you think there's someone there's who's never fought it? Like there's a disease that you can't fight? I'm sure there's got to be, right? Your body I'm doesn't create methane. Can burp it up instead of it. I don't know. I'm just, oh. I'm just saying, Mike. I don't know. Could be. You know. Right, lesbian, I've never farted. Fact. <laughs> but so you're in a. <laughs> You're in a dollar store. She has a knife. Did she get the knife for a dollar? She pulled out. bring it? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think they sell these types of knives. It was called a lock knife, which is basically a flip knife that locks in position. So this girl was ready to party. Another joke. Yeah. Yeah. Another. (laughs) (laughs) So she pulled it out. Basically, she 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 essentially shit on a man and then yelled at him for it. <laughs> the guy just didn't like because what, what what I don't know if it happened here, but I imagine she kind of did like a Gronk spike the football after she fired it here. I think that she was kind of adding insult to injury, and this guy was just like, "Come on, I'm stuck in line here. I'm trying to get solo cups or whatever the hell you buy at a dollar store." Fought's such a great word though. Terrific. It's great. When you think about fought. It's like it, it, you say fought, everyone giggles, everyone smiles. Yeah. Like people don't like like the word fought. I don't really want to know them. Could there be like a distinguished word for the same action? I don't think it could exist, right? I don't think so. But plus the dollar store, the clientele in there smells like shit. The people who go there, <laughs> exactly. the people who work there. The clientele, the products, everything <laughs> smells like shit here at the dollar store. You guys ever fought in public? Exclu- Always. Exclusively. Is that what I smell? Okay, next. Flying preacher, Baptist clergyman flies in like Peter Pan for a sermon. Pastor Bartholomew Orr gave his best impersonation of Peter Pan as he flew into a church ceremony being held in Mississippi. Typically, when a religious leader impersonates Peter Pan, someone ends up getting sexually assaulted. But in this instance, the faith-based con man took to the air and flew. Pastor Orr said his flying arrival was a surprise, just like Jesus will surprise us when he comes back. Personally, I'd rather have seen this man uh, impersonate the crucifixion, but that's just me. What's he saying to these people? Look, He's saying, give me, okay, Gibson, give me your money. Gibson. Give me your money so that I can buy no, more no, strings to hang he, from. I wonder, if, I wonder if people ball. actually believe that this guy was really flying oh, yeah, at the church. Know, they start fainting, you know, they start fainting. And yeah, yeah. The full head and then they wake up. There's a lady rubbing yeah. snakes on her tits and screaming out mumble uh, jumble. There's, there's all, all sorts. We, you know. I mean, these pastors are con artists. Would you guys agree, a lot of these pastors? Uh, yeah, I think that anybody that doesn't believe in Korg, the almighty demon that came from outer space, is an insane person, you know? <laughs> what about the music at the Baptist church, though, and the way they I sing like and the dance? I like the music. It's good nice. stuff. I wish we had some of that. Yeah. What, in the, the, rhythm. In the Roman Catholic Church? Yeah, a little bit of, you know, upbeat stuff. What, in our church? Band, Do you mean no, white people, weird. Mike? I have rhythm. I can dance. What are you talking about? Oh, you don't like that? You like Ave Maria? I mean, what's I the matter with like you? I'm just a little more upbeat. Like some Garth Brooks? or what? No, even Garth Brooks. Yeah. What about like in the uh, Blues Brothers movie? Remember when they were dancing? And I love that movie. That pot? That was a great pot. See, was that a that? Baptist? That was pretty much the whole movie. It's a musical. They were dancing throughout. I've not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for the dig. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't think the guy was really flying. And Obviously. these churches, I think, are great. By the way, like, just I've seen them on TV. I've never been to one. Yeah. You know? All right, let's go to the next one. Florida man stabs woman in the head with a fork during dispute over an uncooked potato. What happened here? Kenneth Crompton used a fork to repeatedly stab a woman in the head after they began arguing over an uncooked potato. Crumpton has been charged with aggravated battery as well as a salt and pepper with a little bit of sour cream on the side. He stabbed the victim <laughs> in the head but claims that he just threw a fork at her. But she has holes in her face that you know aren't being filled with eyes and teeth. So I, I think that the, the guy did it. Next time, cook it right. You had a good, you had a good point about this when yeah. we were talking about it. I was saying you come home, you're pissed off. Yeah, you don't well, get. The guy probably worked 20 hours. He wants to sit down and have a nice warm meal. He digs it. He fucking breaks his tooth <laughs> on a raw potato. Is that one? And then he loses his appetite and he lost his mind. If you break your tooth on a potato, I'm suing that restaurant. Potato's saying. supposed to be soft, Mike. Maybe she looks like Mr. Potato Head, and he thought that was potato. a potato. I don't know. There's nothing worse than that. Well, there's nothing more 2018 than being able to interchange your parts, right? So maybe this is a Mr. Potato Head situation. Are we doing? Are we getting into gender stuff here, or is it just an uncooked potato? What if, like, she cooked the steak wrong, and what was she gonna do? Slice, slice the throat? You know what I'm saying? Isn't the worst? Well, in fairness to him, it takes about two hours to bake a potato, so this guy's gotta wait another two hours for his meal, right? Was this an NFL player who did this, by the way? (laughs) It has to be, right? I would think so. He threw the fork. It's probably a quarterback. All right, Carl. Can we jump back a story? Because there was one under the. I know Mike didn't want to talk about it, but I'd like to get into it. All right. Well, t- well I thought we were just going to forget Explain about this one, but we'll we'll keep it going. Okay. Orangutan forced to work as a sex slave screamed and pooped when the brothel madam showed up to visit her at the rescue center. What the hell is that? 
Monkey see, monkey do. I'm telling you. Pony, the orangutan, was around six years old when she was rescued from this brothel back in 2003. Her captors shaved her almost daily. They made her wear makeup and perfume. And this was in Borneo. There were these palm fi- farmers. They would farm palms. Somebody apparently uses that shit for something. But on their days off, they would go visit this brothel. And you could either bang a, bar- a-, a Borinian woman or a shaved orangutan. <laughs> and some of these guys preferred the orangutan. Okay? So much so that when the town found out about this, they were like, we got to stop them raping the monkey. Men stood outside with machetes refusing to turn over the monkey. How old are the broads over there? Can one of those Baranian people get a, a orangutan pregnant? That is the most amazing question that I've heard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 we're going to have to send somebody to Borneo tomorrow on a plane with Viagra. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some Gatorade. So I'm confused by this one, though. So there, it was a whole house and they... We're whoring out. They, they, they cater to all sorts of things. So if, if they're shaving monkeys over there, who the hell knows? Uh, animals, people do animals. So yeah. So but they, they taught they taught it how to yeah. how to service men. They taught the monkey how to service men. Probably on a banana, which is probably such discipline for a monkey. So it's, to a, not fem- just, it's a female orangutan. I can't guarantee that. Okay. Can you tell the difference? I wouldn't know. You put lipstick know. on that thing and so shave it. I might sure. take it out, you know? I've never looked at a... Might be halfway genitals. through a steak dinner before I receive any stubble. <laughs> I think that the ma- the madam of this place is a marketing genius. Right? Probably the richest person in Bonania. How many of this place? A waiting list for this thing. <laughs> My question is, how many in this bra? How many bras in this broth are actually just sheep monkeys? Like, is this the only one, or are they just kind of like get a, some of them are more passable than others? And I saw a picture of her. She's small, so I'm wondering if like smaller people on this island is it an island or. Uh, let's say Borneo is because we are pretend. ignorant. Let's yeah, pretend. I mean maybe it's smaller people who are going in there, like you know, dwarfs and yeah. yeah. Hey, we're ignorant people, but we're not going to learn unless we ask questions, right? Yeah. How do you know what countries can you? People bang have strange in? fetishes in every country, not just America, not Absolutely. just here on the Monday Show. Oh no. <laughs> All right, let's go check out our commercials, and we're going to come right back with our legend and legendary Paul Gilligan. We'll be right back after these, these this commercial. Yeah. Analytic Wealth Advisors is a firm specializing in financial planning, insurance, and retirement income. Setting up your future can be tough, but Analytic Wealth is here to simplify the process, taking you from before and through retirement with clarity and focus. Time to feel confident about your future. I'm offended at your dating app group photos. Why? Why do you post multi-person pictures? The profile is meant to showcase you, not your squad. Look, here I am with my softball team. And here I am at a bachelorette party. And here I am with my graduating class. I shouldn't need an FBI flowchart to figure out who the f*** you are. I got a Venn diagram going swiping back and forth between photos trying to figure out which female is common to all subsets. Who do you think you are? Better yet, who are you? Oh, you're the blonde in the first picture, but the brunette in the second. Who are you in the third? The Asian dude? Your multi-person photos solicit nothing but eye rolls and left swipes. Grow up. Here we go. Welcome, Paul Gilligan. What's going well, on? Thanks for having me. Thanks How for are coming. you? Oh, this coming, is big, n- big Somebody. stuff. Big stuff. How are you? Good Everything it. good with you guys? Malden Medford, you guys. Yeah, you guys I heard that. Right? That's it. Well, we'll just have a little barrier right here, but that's okay. You know, he became an Uber driver. I became a celebrity. You know what I mean? So, it's all good. How you doing? Who's Malden So, did he get you this Medford jacket at Tellos? Is that? I want to go right up front with this. All right. Tellos is Medford, not East Boston. What's going on? Oh, you, you, you. What do you mean? You came up here from East Boston? Why am I between? Between two Italians, don't stop this shit. All right, <laughs> talking about orangutans. What? Well, hello, here we are. This is a big day for me. I'm serious. I, you know, when they told Speaking me I was invited career. here, you know, I used to hang around garages when I was in eighth grade to be back here at 56. <laughs> I mean, I've played some auditoriums and theaters, but seriously, the way they have the asbestos tiles on the like floor that? and the ceiling is just unreal decor. Just watch out yeah. for the flakes. Where is the exit sign? Because I know I'm getting out of here when the fire starts, all right? 
<laughs> I've never seen so much audio and video shit plugged into one 15 amp fuse in all my life. Uh, are they pumping electrical work in from Swampskit for you people? I'm on the Lynn Swampskit line. Oh, yeah, lucky me. We're all jumping right. off the cops' meter. All right, anyway, sorry. Sorry, I know I'm not live, but I am. I but go it. ahead. What's up? I don't drink. Go. <laughs> So, is electric? <laughs> yeah, what are you laughing at, Carlos? Come on. I heard you're so tiny, you won't even shop at BJ's. You go to Costco because it ends with a vowel. That's right. That's true. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I got my guy. I got my Costco <laughs> card in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Hey, so what's it like growing up? You know, you're, you're in the Mecca of Boston. The comedy is central is in Boston. Like, why is the Mecca of Boston so big with, with the comedians? Like, Hard working, just blue collar, just and pump it up. And the attention span of Boston people is you see how wound up and nervous I am. <laughs> you know, I used to record myself. I had a punchline every 11 to 15 seconds, you know, because that's my own ADHD. Right. Not being able to comprehend, so I just keep banging. That's right. what I do. You know? But I mean, you've been you've been out there with some big names. Yeah. Like uh, Dave Chappelle. Can you tell he us? He was about 18, him? 18 when he came to the Kowloon and, and uh, worked with me. You know, really? but they weren't really getting his stuff. You know, but um, he's gone on to big and. Uh, better things and uh, finding himself and making some money. I love his show. I, I don't follow his stand up. I try not to watch other comedians, uh, but I do love his show. I think Why don't it's you fantastic. watch other comedians? You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to. Yeah. Not steal it, but just some. You might think you thought of it a year later. You know, right, and you, right. it's in your in your head. Uh, you know, so. So that's kind of respect anyway. thing. In yeah. The, in the trade. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. What about Dane Cook? Dane Cook. Uh, can we go on to Boston? Please, thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's right, let No, Dane, Dane, uh, hard working comic, young kid. I uh, used to rip it up, big time. Lenny Clark, legend, unbelievable, hardest working guy, most generous guy in show business I ever met. Really, unbelievable, incredible. You, you hear that about him? I thought Barry yeah. Peasy was too, though. Oh, Peasy's fantastic. Yeah, but yeah, they both are. But Lenny gets invited to a few more gigs than Peasy does. You know. <laughs> no offense to Johnny's one of my best friends. I'm just saying, Lenny's Lenny's Boston. Bottom line, right. you know. But so what was it like good. growing up? In, so it was the 80s? You were in the 80s? No, I didn't start till uh, 1990. Really? Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the start. Well, the start was uh, I started hanging around. I, I, I was from Malden. My wife was from Peabody. And I used to follow WBCN, uh, Billy, Billy West and Mark Parento. 104.1. And they used to head up to Stevie D's in Middleton on Route 114. Way so, up there. Yeah, yeah, way up there. So right. being a dumb kid from Malden, you know, going to Peabody was a hike. So I said to my now wife back then we were dating i said where's this stevie d's place and i just got hooked and started hanging around there all the time and then i saw dana carvey perform live like four times and i said i gotta do this and didn't hurt when lenny clark had a sitcom in 1990 <laughs> so that was my first year on so, so did lenny kind of take you under his wing uh no he was busy he was in la then when i started really? yeah oh yeah he lived in la yeah who was your first show uh, my first show was at Catch a Riding Star in Cambridge. And I walked around Harvard Square and rehearsed yeah, and rehearsed. Oh, I did good, but I didn't do anything that I rehearsed. You was know? that like yeah. two people capacity, that place? Uh, no, Catch, no, you know, buck and a half, you know. <laughs> That's where a lot of the guys used to hang out. That was Louis C.K.'s club, and, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the guys uh, hung out down there, you know. And then satellite rooms opened Who's up. Who's Louis C.K.? I don't know, but anyway. What happened that you ch you you said you you didn't do what you were preparing to do? What, yeah, what I happened? changed my act uh, totally. You know, just felt yeah. like doing it, or it's funny because no, no, I just uh, just just went off. I thought I had plenty of material, and and then sometimes when you're doing a show and you you have like today, you know, you're always trying to write new material. Sometimes you'll do a show, and if you feel it's not going well, like the show's supposed to start at eight, then you go on at ten. And it's a, you know it's a big conference and some people are gabbing. Then you tend to always go back to your oldest material. It's the strangest thing. Well, yeah, you you've said you it know? so many times. That's probably easiest. Yeah, you know yeah, it's I mean? easiest. Yeah. So I mean, you're an electrician by trade during the day. I mean, where do you find time to write your material? And how I just often? live it. Uh, just, yeah, yeah, I just live it and know where the punchlines are, you really? know, and more just ranting and raving. You right. know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's 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 really where it's all released. Everything's through laughter, you know. That's how I grew up, you know. So you grew up in Malden. Yeah. And then, so how did you know you wanted to be in the entertainment business or be a comedian? Did you? Didn't. Uh, all my friends told me to when I was 18, and I'm glad I didn't start when I was 18. Right. Then I was hanging around Stevie D's. I got laid off from a big job. Already bought a house. Was about to get married, and I'm probably one of the only guys that can. 
tell a nice young lady that I'm going to be going out every weekend once we get married. And right. here we are. So she's an so she's an angel. She's an angel, but if I'm not home, I can't annoy her. So yeah. <laughs> now I heard you. <laughs> I'm a nag, man. Can't you tell? Are you really I'm nag? amped up. I'm not mic'd up. I'm amped up. Do you drive your kids crazy? I drive everyone crazy. Really? Yeah. 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 Like, tell, tell me some of the stuff you do. I'm just psycho. I'm just <laughs> psycho. Yeah. You're psycho. No, I mean, I'm serious. I'm psycho. I have wacky dreams. I, I uh, crazy stuff, man. You know? Now, what yeah. about these people that write their dreams down? Are you one of those people? No, I just, just tell my family what I dreamt about the night, and that's probably how I'm going to go in my sleep, because last week my son was driving a truck into a lake, the door opened, I woke up, so. <laughs> the other dream was uh, the kitchen floor flooding, going into the electrical outlets, and I'm smashing hammers off my kitchen island, and I woke up, yeah, so. Those are the do you get a lot of sleep at night? Uh, do you sleep good when you're dreaming? I'm confused on this. I don't know. I think, I think that it's means you're REM. at REM. Yeah, People you're... tell me when you're dreaming like that, you're sleeping really good. But no, I'm up all night. My Indian doctor has me counting backwards. Really? used to be from 100. Now I'm up to 1,000. <laughs> I start winding backwards from 1,000. And I'm thinking about getting some gummy bears with the medical marijuana in it. And, uh, we got a guy! Zone out. Yeah. I heard that stuff works. Yeah, well, you know. I went to school in Malden. People say, Paul, did you go to Malden High? I said, I went everywhere high. <laughs> so you wouldn't trade growing up for Malden for anything in the world? Never, you? never. No, it's a great no, city. Great town. We always get together. Me and my friend Dave Russo, we pull it all together. There's a lot of comedians that come out of there. You know, Bob Gatro, Anthony Sabelli, Dave Russo, myself, and the, the late, great John Panette. Can the we give it up amazing. for Dave Russo real quick? Yeah, Love Dave it. Russo. Yeah. Yeah. Love Dave Russo. Dave Russo has been like instrumental with helping us, and that kid is the best. Yeah, I mean, he's you know a killer he comic. To you? I yeah, mean, he's one of my best friends. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, on and off the stage. He's awesome. Love he's keeping in touch with him. You know? Now, what about Charlie Moore? I heard you're on the Charlie Moore show. Yeah, yeah. Is that now? Okay. I was just on the Charlie Moore show last week. It ran, I think, about five times. You really? Know? Yeah. Did you go fishing? It was great. Oh, we fished. Yeah. Did you catch anything? A uh, thirty-inch uh, striper and a twenty-eight-inch striper. First time in my life ever pulling up a fish like that. He's got good luck, that guy. Yeah. Had you out there? Well, I'm the one who caught the fish. He caught the little squibby. <laughs> How'd you link up with yeah. him? Yeah. Uh, I was doing a show for our friend Dave Russo for Globe Santa. Everything revolves Dave, around Russo. You guys know Because Dave's yeah, always helping out. I mean, he does a big show every year. This year, I think it's December 12th or 13th. And um, it's at Giggles, and it's for Globe Santa. And uh, Charlie saw my act, and he called Dave and said, I want that guy on my show. Yeah. That was it. Jesus. Showing up and working, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah they, that guy's got pretty popular. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. he's yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's a local guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Linfield. I mean, he's yeah. all over the country. Oh, he's uh, all over this country. He's yeah. in seventy countries starting soon. Really? Yeah. It's like Herbal amazing, life. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kluski, what do we got? Paul, we understand that you're a well-traveled man of taste, and yeah. we thought that you'd be the perfect person to christen our new segment called "Yeah, That's the Spot." We're going to spin this wheel, the breaking balls wheel of fate, and identify a food in a town, and you're going to tell us what's the best spot to go. Or if there isn't one there, shit all over it. Oh, okay. You ready? I guess I'm ready, sure. Spin it. All right, we are That's my glass. watching That's this spin That's here, lying. and we've got time. Melrose. We're going to go to Melrose. Melrose. Hope you're familiar with Melrose. Well, I'm and familiar you're going to get with Melrose. A, I'm from Malden. A coffee. What's the best place in Melrose to get a coffee? Well, uh, yeah, they do. Uh, I don't stop in Melrose because, first of all, you can only drive 25 miles an hour in Melrose, and I don't drive that slow. Especially uh, after a cup of coffee. Uh, for, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I guess if you were to go there, it would probably be Starbucks. And um, I think the only other place is a Dunkin' Donuts. But I would do Starbucks. Uh, Melrose, you know, they're, they're a little bit snooty down there. In fact, some of the concussions aren't coming from youth sports. It's from the mothers in Melrose <laughs> pushing the baby joggers over the cobblestone driveways. <laughs> and the kid's head is banging. So you like fast cars. Let me ask. So you grew up in the 80s. What did you drive for? Oh, I don't like fast cars. I just go at least 26. What did you drive for a car back in the 80s? I drove a 1971 station wagon held together with Led Zeppelin bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 12-pack in the passenger seat under the seatbelt. A couple of bones seat in the Seatbelt that you didn't use. It's dressed in a Terry Clark sweatsuit from Marshalls for $9.99. Yeah! Beautiful. That's what I drove. What about you, You Mike? put on the gas, 
Seat went up. There was no floor. Yeah, it was crazy. And your beers fell out? It was crazy. No, no beers. I didn't do that. <laughs> Would you drive for a car back then? I rock. But when, when <laughs> I rock him, time out. Time out. When you of say back then, when you say back then, he's he's ten years younger than me. He's a child. Love this guy. He's a kid. I'm just saying. He, he drove an I rock though. T tops. In back, yeah. Well, it's right. Memphis. I had a Mustang GT. Of course you did. Of course you did. You see that? I had a hand-me-down station wagon, and these guys, I rocks, and you know what I mean? See, that's the Italian thing. You <laughs> we know? stole them. Yeah. I rocks, <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Mustangs, penis extensions, whatever works. <laughs> We're Italian. We don't need penis extensions. Okay. I would have gone. You the Irish inch, don't you? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Duncan's is fine. I would have gone with Mary Lou's, but. There might not be one. Mary Lou's is in the Melrose. No. There's no, no Mary Lou's in Melrose. No, no. no. Melrose, Australia. You're knocking yeah. enough doors in Melrose. You're yeah. finding Mary Lou. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Moving right along. That was good. Uh, let's spin that wheel one more spin time. Spin it again. Or a couple more times. We got time. And we're spinning, and we are waiting, and it is awesome. What do we got here? We are going to Steaks in Middleton. Where's the best place to get a steak in Middleton? The gym. Uh... You know what? You probably just kill a cow at Richardson's. Because <laughs> I, I, that's fresh. I, I mean, Maggie says steak tips, but as far as a steak, they hand out baseball bats at the cages. Right? <laughs> you go bang, bang them over the head. Go cow tipping like the guys from Southie. I don't know. Do whatever you want. I don't think they have a restaurant. Uh, not not a steakhouse. Anybody, no, but they have Maggie's know? Farm, and for Italian, they have Teresa's. But no yeah, no steakhouses. Yeah, that's, yes. Isn't that commercial? Yeah. That's a good joint. Yeah. Teresa's. Nice. Yeah. Well, good on yeah. you for knowing that murdering a cow is your only option. I mean, yeah. you probably get the best steak in, in Richardson in Middleton. In where? Middleton Jail. That's oh, the Middleton Jail. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right around the corner. Yeah, they probably have steaks. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. The yeah, inmates give steaks. steaks to each other. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ready for one more? Sure. Go ahead. All right, let's spin that wheel. <laughs> big old spin. Big money, big money, big money. Woo! All right. What do we got? What do we got? We need to see where the best Wakefield... Spinny, spinny donuts are. Wakefield donuts. Donuts in Wakefield. Well, I don't shop for donuts, thank God. You don't look but like if it. I was yeah. to get one, it would be at the Honeydew at the lake, and you can yeah. see the guys acting right like they're there. wild hogs right with there. their motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. The Mets. The, the no, Mets. Wait, the Mets. That's a the, nice. Isn't that a baseball team in New York? Yeah. <laughs> I've been hearing this all night long. How many donuts are you the eating Mets. for crying out loud? <laughs> the Mets. Have you to the Mets? No, I don't know the Mets. This kid's is all about Medford. It's in Medford. Uh, so Wakefield. Yeah. We're Wakefield. Yeah, with the Wakefield. <laughs> of course you didn't. That's a field trip. Wakefield. You're Absolutely. saying Medford. That's a field Mets. trip. You go to the lake. Everything's Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Who yeah. the Mets? Yeah. 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 There's nothing I guess. like a good homemade... Donuts. Yeah. And and where where is the best place? Everyone knows it's around here. Right? Canes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. No, PZ I, hates canes. I hate canes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember Mrs. Where Foster's? do you go? Z you know what? Iggy's. Is it Ziggy's? Ziggy's. Ziggy's? Yeah. Oh, I heard about them in Peabody. Well, they're in Peabody yep. and Salem. Okay. Salem. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. If we're yep. going special, we'll go canes. But none of this Butterfinger crumbled up on a donut shit. Yeah. Like, if I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a half a honey dip in a coffee. Exactly. Right. right. Canes right. used to be unbelievable. Yeah. Then they got all need to like mainline diabetes. Well, it's not. They like three fifty a donut. Anyway, they got like yeah, design, oh, yeah. they got like design of yeah. friggin' donuts. They got to tell you a funny story though, real quick one. You, you may not think it's funny, but I do. Growing up, you know, my father, we had seven kids in my family, so my father, when he was living at our house, he would uh, he'd take, uh, you know, he'd come home every Sunday and he'd hand us donuts. That's all we had for breakfast, but you were thinking it's a treat, but it was a buck and a quarter, a dozen, right? Well, the first time he took my brother to church, you know. My brother starts whacking him after he did the community. He goes, why are they bringing those donuts out? <laughs> See, that sucked. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, but go on. No, nah, they just hand out crackers at that place. Got seven yeah. seven yeah. brothers and yeah. sisters? Yeah, there's seven of us. Five wow. boys, two girls, yeah. Jesus. That's why I'm funny. <laughs> well, do, now, were you the funny one in the no, family? No, uh, 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 my brother Danny's the funniest really? in the family, yeah. yeah. What's he doing? Uh, Danny works at MIT in the Boston Garden, yeah. Most of us have two jobs. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break now? Yeah. We'll take a quick break. I want you to watch a morning Monday episode. It was a Lightning of the Tree event. Did you see that? Did you guys see that? I didn't see yeah, that. It's pretty no. good. Okay. And then we're going to come right back with Gilligan. All right. All right. Yeah! All right. Serving the North Shore of Boston for 20 plus years, Caponegro Construction specializes in all facets of residential and commercial construction, custom homes, new construction, additions, kitchen remodels, and complete renovations. 
This family-owned and operated business takes great pride in the work they do and the products they deliver. No job too big or too small. Call for a quote today at 781-596-1414. We are in Boston, 2018 tree lighting ceremony, okay? Christmas tree, Hanukkah bush, you name it, they're lighting them all. Let's go. <laughs> Andy! I'm here to celebrate, I'm from Boston. I celebrate Christmas every year I come here. You come here every year? Every year. Since you were little? Since I was little. I've been ice skating at the ice skating rink for years. Are you a good skater? Awesome, I was can a goalie. Can you skate backwards? Uh, yeah, I can even and squirt you with it. Really? Yeah. Not yeah. like that. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Monday! <laughs> yeah. Follow the guy in the white jacket. I got my hat on. Monday! How are you doing? How are you doing, buddy? What's this, up? This is my first time at the Christmas tree lighting. Happy holidays. It is a happy holiday, isn't it? Hey, whose phone's off the hook? Someone's phone's off the hook. Hang that phone up, will ya? Jesus, you gotta hang it up. Smash that thing, smash it. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, yeah. Hey, want me to carry you? I'll carry you up there, just don't pee on me. Monday! That's a beautiful outfit you got on. Are you like, can you, you speak English? Monday! Are you smoking over there, cigarette? I was smoking some weed, but... Good stuff? <laughs> what do you guys want for Christmas, real quick? I'm Jewish, so... <laughs> what? Monday! Five, four, three, two, one! Holy Anticlimatic! Wasn't that good? <laughs> it wasn't that good! It was like premature ejaculation! You know it, lady! You get premature ejaculated to all the time! Come on! Give me a can hold it in! Now, did you guys exchange presents with each other? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, what do you want for Christmas this year? <laughs> That's a good question. A boyfriend. A boyfriend? <laughs> Listen, we're going to put you on the Monday show. Like, we're, we're yeah, just, I do. I really like your stuff. That's a really nice Mr. Monday's also a fashion consultant. I don't know if you knew that. Look at my jacket. Can you tell him a fashion consultant? Yeah, Look at this thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the price tag. You still have the price tag in your hat. You're take it off. Ah. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the old major look. Well, at, least we get, at least we get to see you here. Mondays. I love Mondays. I mean, yeah. All right. This guy loves Mondays. I love Mondays. How about a high five for that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Love Mondays. Do you love Mondays? Because we love Mondays. I love Mondays. You do. Ooh, this kid loves Monday. Best day of the week. Hey, come on, let's get you on camera. Did you got know no he socks said on. It? Put some socks on, buddy. <laughs> He's freezing out. He's definitely not from Boston. Welcome back. So, Paul. Yes. Now, you're an electrician by trade during the day. Yes. Let's, let's talk about that. How'd you get into the electrical business? I saw I was a paper boy at 14 and I used to help a guy in the summer then I uh, went out and did different jobs in high school and then on my 20th birthday I was at the liquor store getting a case of beer and I ran into that same guy and he said what are you doing for work I said I just quit my job he said you want to come work for me I'll give you two bucks an hour on the books and two bucks an hour off the books and I <laughs> said sure so that was it and, that's so, so you and he told me giving me four dollars an hour that someday I'd make money and he was right. He was right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, electricians don't stop, and that's a great trade. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard trade, but no it's uh, but it's right now. There's we have a shortage of there's workers in this country, boy. I'll tell you. I know. Yeah. There's not a lot of good electricians out there. Yeah, I that's know. like a propaganda thing, in yeah. my opinion. I remember growing up, and like I was always pushed to go to like college. I had like you might not know what you wanted to do, but it was go to college, go to college. You didn't learn the trade, and it's like. It was like a sure thing if you went the other way. And so many people could have done other things in their life. You know, like you have a lot of opportunities probably because of the flexibility and stuff. And they, we don't teach kids that shit. Yeah. 
Right. You got really deep right there. Yeah, yeah. that was really wow. deep. You got fucking that was deep, beautiful. Yeah. Like you don't get like you're usually wow. joking around. Like yeah. that's the most serious I've ever yeah. seen. I have you. a TED talk this yeah. week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you kind of wish He's you went to the trades? I just want the audience to absolutely. Know, he has no pants yeah. on I, right I, now. Everything <laughs> in my house is falling apart. I can't fix anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so but I can tell you all about European literature. That's gonna help me a lot, right? So basically, he needs an electrician, a carpenter, yeah. and, a, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a counter guy. Yeah, exactly. At his house. What town do you live in? Lynn. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm a plumber. <laughs> so who's tougher to deal with? Like customers in the electrical business or, or an audience at one of your comedy shows? Uh, you know what? Um, God, I never have problems with audiences. You know, uh, customers. Never got heckled, never got heckled people, at all? Yeah, I've been heckled, but it, it doesn't go bad. Yeah, you know. It, it, no, the, the more aggravating as a comedian is is people chatting at yeah. the bar, especially when you're trying yeah, to be shut a, up. do your routine and be on sync, you know? And right. they just throw you off and they don't know they are. But a lot mm -hmm. of them, they aren't really heckling. But, you know, and sometimes we'll do f a lot of fundraisers. The, the business has really become about fundraising. I know, yeah. And then when you're doing the fundraisers, these people come out, they haven't seen each other for years. They don't want to, yeah. sometimes they don't want to hear you, so they'll yeah, chat. Yeah. But as far as electrical customers, um... I, I usually just work for people I know. I haven't advertised in God, I don't know, probably twenty five years. You got any good stories? You know? Any good electrical um, stories? Customers I, bad I, or good? I have uh yeah, well customers I'm not gonna really uh, <laughs> you know, pick on them. We've done some mistakes. I remember someone had you know, went to put the outlet in the kitchen island not knowing the dishwasher was behind it and zipped four holes in behind the person's <laughs> oh, dishwasher. <laughs> uh you know, one time I drilled a hole to put an outlet in the house, and I sent the snake up, and I'm like, the house isn't 100 feet tall. Where's my snake? <laughs> and it was out hanging out of the gutter next to the roof, you know. <laughs> but that was back when we were younger, you know. And it was uh, perfect. Of course, uh, Tasso hasn't had a phone line at John's Roast Beef because he called me to do some work, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but he wanted permits, and I'm not going with permits. <laughs> right? That's the only roast yeah. beef place I've yeah. ever seen with mayors in there. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he likes to look at them. So oh, of course he does. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. hair. Yeah. I mean, that's I what he keeps telling me. I know. Gorgeous. Yeah. 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 The mayors sweat when Tasso goes by. Yo, yeah, he's the hottest. Just ask him if you see him. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Is this, yeah. I heard his yeah. brother. Yeah. I heard Tasso's brother was the opposite of him. Uh, no, I'm not going to go opposite. Oh, he's a cocky you know? prick, yeah, too, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, they're not opposite, so, you know. But when you go in tassels, be careful if you order a three-way, because you don't know how many people are in there. <laughs> <laughs> Klusky, what's this uh, special report like I'm hearing? About? Oh, I have a special report here, okay? I have a story here out of New York. It's a bill being pushed that would criminalize airdropping unwanted penis pictures that are sent to your phone. One of America's civil liberties could now find you up to one year in jail or a thousand dollars for just, you know, sending somebody a picture of your penis. Can't do it anymore, Carl. No. What do you mean anymore? Who did it in the first place? <laughs> just saying. Uh, I'm gonna leave this up to the Italian so, guys. So basically, to, like, there's a function on iPhones that allows you to to have an open mailbox, and if yeah, I'm within yeah. 30 feet of you. And I have like this beautiful portrait with like maybe some sepia tone lighting of my uh -huh. cock. And I can forward it to you without your permission. That's and then crazy. you get an eyeball full of I my mean, underwear. Mike and I send dick pictures to each other. That's what I'm talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. To each other so a while. is that uh, the, in the thirty foot range? Or? He, can only, he can't even see a quarter <laughs> oh, of my oh, fucking okay. thing. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. Yeah. Shave, shave. I can see a little more. Right. Well, the shave it makes it bigger. That's what you guys do, right? Yeah. Well, you listen. Let's not go there. But I avoid yeah. glue traps. All Actually, right, so. Carlo, I'm, I'm developing an app that you can superimpose a lighter over your penis pictures, and you can change the size of the lighter to make your penis look bigger. Tell me about the quarter size. <laughs> 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 What's the matter? Did you had a quarter size in your terry no, cloth? No, I used to wear a terry cloth sweatsuit to school, and I would just, you know, reach down in my pocket and pull it out and tell the girls I had some coins stuck in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so half of them knew what I felt like. You know? <laughs> Imagine if that was today. Uh, I'd be in jail. Yeah. I'd be in jail. There's a lot of shit going on today. Can't even talk about it. But, but apparently, <laughs> apparently, like, so what's probably happening is, like, girl goes on the subway every day for work. Guy knows it. Guy does like a whole photo shoot of himself in front of a green screen. We have one here, and then just starts airdropping them to women on the uh, subway. But doesn't he, don't they have to open it? It's you, it, you basically have an open mailbox, so the mailman just drops stuff in your mailbox, right? Right. Well, he doesn't put his penis in there. Unfortunately, of people course. in the New York subway are getting that. Is that right? That's crazy. Yeah. Constantly. Constantly. Wow. And you know what? You can That's probably figure insane. it out sometimes, like which guy it is, right? 
Looking wow. around, five guys in the room. We could probably figure out whose penis is what right now, right? What about our wow. audience? I mean, is wow. our audience taking dick pictures? You know, we. If you do, put them in the comment section. Well, we'll I know uh, the, ol <laughs> the only good thing I know. Oh, hey, the only oh, good thing is we sat Tasso and Russo thirty-one feet away, so we're safe. <laughs> so Klusky, over under ten. <clears throat> How many dick pictures have you taken? Of oh, yourself? I thought you were saying inches. I was no, going to say no, over far under. How under. many pictures have you taken? Far far I know you're under 10. Total? I need three just to get the, the up to the head. <laughs> I don't have a panoramic. So over under 10, how many dick pictures have you taken of yourself? No, I haven't taken one of those things. Are you so under, 10. under 10? No. How about you? Never. You? Nothing. My Never. battery died. God. What happened to... <laughs> <laughs> what whatever happened to you like have a battery in your penis? <laughs> yeah, well, you don't know about that. No, I, oh, no. Wouldn't what shock after me. the show? <laughs> whatever happened to like a nice dick painting or something? You know what I mean? Some like a thought out thing. It was back with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. They don't do that anymore. Oh my God, <laughs> how many strokes does it take to to paint a penis? <laughs> I'm not sure. Until it comes. <laughs> All right, let's 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 go. I heard we have we're making progress with improvements with our dating app. It's been a while oh. since we've checked in on our dating app, and it's been thriving. But we still have people uploading pictures and not filling out the questionnaire, so it's hard to match people up. Uh, we've bypassed this by just going on their profiles and filling in the questions for the ones that they didn't. Okay. So we're gonna start off. Um, I love this this, this is Mr. Slank. What Paul, guy. take a look at this guy. I see him. Yeah, Mr. Where, Slank. He didn't fill out what his fondest memory is, but just take a look at this guy. You must have an idea. What well, it sure as hell wasn't when he was getting that toupee put on Jesus. his Jesus. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Look at that thing. Like I picked it up on 93. Oh, my God. Um, his fondest memory? Scoring a 78-year-old woman at the Vogue after he got thrown out of the palace <laughs> for not having a chin strap on his hairpiece. <laughs> Yeah, they wanted him to check that at the door, and he was like, no, this is uh, coming with me. <laughs> All right. Wow. Mr. Monday, are you ready? Yeah. What is Walter Slank's biggest turnoff? Pornos. <laughs> he, he's turned off by pornography? Yeah, he's turned off by pornography. It's intimidating to him? Because he's got a battery in his penis, too. So. Wow, this guy's weird. A battery huh? in his penis. This guy's he's weird. He's got a slinky. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Machine Gun Mike. What's up? What is Mr. Slank's secret fetish? Wow, what a weirdo, huh? This guy's got like a like a blow up doll, right? And then and then what he does is like at breakfast box. he changes his hairdo. He like breakfast and lunch and dinner. He just you know what I'm saying? You can just see that. Look, like 10 look at his wigs. And oh yeah. yeah. And a what pump a freak. <laughs> at least do the sideburns the same color, you know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah. I think he likes like milky mushy breasts. Oh yeah, nuts. yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> this, this, this guy just ejaculates on an air mattress with tits every night. <laughs> Wow. All right, moving on. Next is Wendy Backish. Wednesday uploaded about 100 pictures of her cleavage, oh, but she didn't geez. answer any of the personality questions. Poor Mike, Wendy. what is Wendy's favorite pastime? Wow. What does this girl do? You know what she does? Because she looks like she's about two foot three. She's, she's a boy. model she's at Halloween. Up. Remember how, when you go into CBS, you got those weird teeth for the Halloween? Yep. The she's a model. Lips. Instead of riding a horse, she has a hat. She rides like a donkey because she's small with the thick teeth. See it right there? <laughs> the Identical. Vampire Dead teeth. ringer. She's gross, huh? I don't, I don't know. She seems like a sweet <laughs> she's gal. She's gross, huh? I mean, her poor poor thing. A poor thing. She's, she's born got a nice way. cleavage. Yeah. Mr. Monday, what would you say is her relationship status? I think she's always dating a man and a woman at the same time. She's like into she's that. She's Polly. Yeah, she's into that. She likes to spice it up. And like she bites her <laughs> poor thing. Polly's the new thing, huh? Everybody's just fucking everybody, right? Yeah, it's just oh, weird. It's just cool. strange today. Greedy pricks. <laughs> Pick a leg. She definitely bites her prey. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. the one time we're like, you know, you're grandfathered into things. We're like reverse grandfathered in. Now we're stuck in the the single, you know what I mean, monogamy and shit. She's gross. Huh? <laughs> it doesn't work every time. Okay, Paul, what would you what would you say is Wendy's preferred method of birth control? Um, <laughs> doing guys from Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're all impotent. <laughs> I would have said facing her dates, but we'll go with the Lynn one. All right, next one up. <laughs> Kaj Plato is our next single man looking for love. Mike, this one is for you. Take a look at Kaj and tell us what you think his biggest regret is in life. <laughs> Oh man! Not getting a job as a manager at T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> that jackass! <laughs> what an idiot! Paul, what was Mr. Plato's high school nickname? Bear ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trick question. Uh, he never went to high school. This kid. Okay. Yeah. He, he's right to T-Mobile. 
Mr. Monday, what is Kaj's favorite date spot? Oh, he takes his dates to Planet Fitness. <laughs> this guy, and then, then when he's done there, he probably takes him to like a Mexican restaurant. You take him, <laughs> yeah. You take him on tonight. a Monday. They're gonna yeah. eat pretty well. Take him on a Monday. Fitness. They get the pizza, then they go to shop it up with uh, some Mexican shit. Uh, didn't one of our um, our associates have an incident? At Wait a fitness? second. Let's oh, talk about that. Talked about whoa, whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, he works whoa, out at Planet whoa, Fitness. Someone try to you. whack him. Whoa. They try to whack him. It wasn't there. Whoa. They thought hey. you were there. They, they tried to whack you. They put that legit. That was in Lynn. Where else? Legitimate yeah. bullets. Right Bobby Yeager. Oh, no, I one know. Of our, one of our contributors, Bobby Yeager. Wow. He was uh, Ten, at Yeah, the, he was there. He, he left live footage. Yeah, no joke. But the shots go wow. everywhere. How could you miss Bubba? Yeah, yeah. That's right. That just <laughs> happened last week. Yeah, we had a guy from the show crazy. in the gym at the same crazy. time. I couldn't figure out if they were shooting from Boston Street or if they drove right up. It's like 200 yards to the street. Let me tell you, they need a shotgun to penetrate Bubba Yeager, okay? Oh, shotgun. Yeah. Thank shot. God. Yeah. That fucking guy's Tupac <laughs> couldn't kill Bubba Yeager. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last but, not, last but not least is Duke LaFay. Something tells me this guy hasn't been quaid, laid in quite some time, so maybe we can help him out by filling in the profile. Paul, what was Mr. LaFay's high school superlative? Uh, most likely to look like a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Can anybody name the porn star? Dennis Eckersley. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching Stand at better. home, if you're Is watching at home, what porn star does this gentleman look like? I'm telling you. <laughs> what are you watching, porn? Dennis Eckersley. Eric Furtado. Okay, Mike, are you ready? What's up? <laughs> what is Duke's biggest turn on? Biggest turn on? I'm telling you, doing porn as Dennis Eckersley. I mean, that's that like very personal, Mike. That that's seems him, like a, a Mike fantasy to me. Maybe. <laughs> Look at the hey, hey, everything goes on this show. Mr. Monday, what is Mr. LaFay's sexiest feature? Probably a scalp on his forehead because you can't see it. Because <laughs> everything else you look at looks like shit. <laughs> Jesus. So I'd say those two things. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. I, I think we're, we're caught up. So if you guys are looking for love, jump on the app. If you liked anybody, let us know in the comments section. I mean, what's the matter with you people? You're not commenting? I mean, hey, look, at our app is like really connecting people. Yeah. I mean, it's doing people at home can make fun of these assholes, too. I mean, what do you think about all these people trying to date people? Did you guys ever go on a dating app? No. No. I didn't. No, I mean, we're all never married, guys. We we never, used, yeah. Well, we used to do it old-fashioned. Bump into them at a red light and exchange papers, you know? So that's how it happened? And stalk them. When I was over in Iraq, I was on the dating app over there, and it's just burka, burka, infidel, infidel, burka. <laughs> well, listen, we had a great show tonight. Everything's uh, really good. Um... Can we talk about some of the shows you got coming up? Yeah, I'll be performing at Giggles at uh, Prince Pizza on Route 1 this Saturday night, December 8th at 8.30. Nice. With Will Noonan and Mitch Stinson. <laughs> That'll be a great show. Yeah. And I'll also be performing G January 4th and 5th at the Kowloon and Saugus. How many shows do you think you do a year? I'm going to say um, <clears throat> I probably do 150 maybe. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a full time yeah. gig. That's not a part time no, no, gig. No, no, am I doing? No, I'm way off on 150. That would be no. That would be no. I'm gonna say, I probably average maybe, I'd yeah, say 100. I'm glad you're not just billing me for electrical yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 100 is still a lot. Yeah, so it's Ooh. a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and so yeah, well, you know what it is with me is doing electrical all the time too. So got zapped. As you get older, you know, you cut back. <laughs> You, you know what I mean with right. summers. Right. You know I'm I'm I'm, eight, I'm 56. If I get to 86, that's 30 years. There's 10 weeks in the summer. I'm down to 300 weeks. Oh, the Greenheads and Ipswich take two weeks a year from me. I'm down to oh, 240 wow. weeks. Hey, those so things I'm starting to think. Those things. I'd rather get stung by a bee than one of those yeah. things. Oh yeah. For oh sure. the Greenheads. Oh, oh yeah. They'll affect you. Yeah. Yeah. People don't go to their beaches or their homes or boats for two weeks. It's wild. Can you believe you live you up know? in God's country? It's a beautiful area. I know. Yeah. Last week I had a fisher cat in my neighborhood. Oh, those things yeah. are loud, huh? Yeah, loud. Two and a half hours. Scary. What are they you know? attack? They attack. What are my they wife's after? going, what are you just going to lay there? I said, no, I'll, let me go out and fight it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> rip your pot. an MMA match last week. <laughs> we thought we had a fisher cat, but it turned out there was just a guy murdering babies next door. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, that's a nice area. So, But didn't they do a movie up there? Up uh, in Switch? A few, yeah, yeah. The uh, what's the one with uh, Denzel Washington? The Equalizer was that it, right? That was well. I just saw it. I'm getting caught up in a lot of stuff. I coach youth sports for 13 years, raised my kids. <laughs> now I'm starting to watch movies from you know 20 years ago. You know, you'll so. you'll, you'll miss when the kid. Well, you Catch probably up. stopped coaching yeah. youth. Yeah, well, yeah. Did I mean, you no, miss my, it? 
with the the youth. Yeah. No, I was I got in trouble. I was you know I told the kids yesterday at a banquet that. I was kind of an unstable guy anyway, you know, so probably shouldn't have been coaching him. I would snap, <laughs> yell stuff, you know. You know, coach, how come I can't pitch? Because you can't catch. <laughs> we don't have lights on the field. Well, let me get the trophy. You know, Jackson, go to center field. Coach, I don't like center field. Jackson, I don't like children, but no one else signed up for the free job. <laughs> right, right. I made the AAU team know your father's check cleared. You're not that good, you know. I'm glad Extra Innings donated the carpet for this place, too, you like guys. That, huh? What do you run, a doggy daycare during like the week that, huh? when you're not making money here on Monday nights? No, I take rounders. Right. Just in case any of you guess shit right here, you can just sweep it up. We play Pepper up here. Uh, Pepper, oh, okay. People, oh, don't even know, people don't even know what Pepper, Pepper is. Existed. You know yeah. what Pepper is? Yeah. I know pickles. Pepper, Pepper, Pepper was like... You put you a little in your butthole when you can't get no, hurt. No, Pepper right? was a game you play in baseball. Oh. Yeah. Right? Oh. Wait, you cut the ball in half? No, you have one guy. Yeah. You have one guy with the bat, and you yeah. have a bunch of guys around him, and you throw the ball into it. It's Pepper. Pepper. I know Billy. I know Simsy. Where is he? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. knows yeah. what it is. Pepper, Pepper. And you, you play Pepper, and it's like ground ball game. No one even knows what that is. Yeah, I know. If you look at the at Fenway Park... It says it right in the backstop, no Peppa. Yeah. You ever oh, see yeah, that? Yeah, oh, I see that. That's about oh, yeah. Peppa. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, wow. Yeah, you know. But what about uh, these kids today? The, the, what a difference, huh? Oh, my God. It's amazing, isn't it? Like the it? kids you yeah. coach. There was no A when you were growing you know, up. Think of our kids at the high school reunion and when 30 years from now going, remember that day we worked? I know. Oh, shit. <laughs> remember that day we were on the internet? Oh, shit. Yeah. We're on the Fortnite. internet? Yeah. Yeah, Every right. day is a Facebook yeah. uh, 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 high school reunion now. It's, Facebook. it's unbelievable, isn't it? They don't even the high school reunion. You don't leave paper it. roots. Remember, we had paper roots. I had paper roots. Oh my God, Wiffle these ball. kids do nothing Wiffle today. Ball, half, half ball, ball. Yeah. Those are the oh, days. Oh yeah, half ball was unbelievable. The East Boston Spin guys the still have the tournaments, but they moved them up to West Peabody, so you get some grass. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot of guys yeah. from East Boston yeah. over yeah. there now. Oh, I know. You know that. what I never yeah. played, what? which is a great sport, is handball. Yeah. Really? Never played it. That's probably right. pretty. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. I can't go I to sleep every unless day. I, do that. I played racquetball, never Racquet handball. Racquetball yeah. is a good sport. Racquetball is yeah, great. Racquetball is Try it before you go to sleep, it helps. Love racquetball. <laughs> the handball, you handball, yeah, you play. Hey, we all play handball. <laughs> what, you don't have sweats? <laughs> Come on. You I probably have Sergio Tacchini in your wardrobe. <laughs> I still got a pair of them. I know them. Yeah. I got Tacchini. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, <laughs> uh, listen, check out our new winter gear commercial right now. Pre orders right now. Check it out. We'll be right back. We're just coming at your Monday, yeah! Black hoodies for the winter! You should be shoveling in Monday, yeah! Girls wanna see you with your hat on! I love Monday winter hats! Wear it outside! Wear it in bed! Nothing better than a warm head! Light your grandkids tell them you knitted it! Winter's coming! Winter's coming! Winter's coming! Winter! It's here! Get your cozy, keep your drink cold, keep your hands warm! We got our love Monday calendars, pin up girls! Winter's here, buy your gear! Breaking balls. <laughs> breaking fucking balls. Oh, this guy's a badass. We are going for gold. Yes. Joe Abukas, SO to the ditch. Can you say I love Mondays? I love Mondays. Oh, this guy's a fucking natural right here. He loves fucking Mondays. His Mondays are not suck, they love it. Oh. The best fucking day of the week. It's the best fucking day of the always. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that too. Same thing. It's the best day always and forever! It's the best day of our life! Can you say I love Mondays? I love Mondays! Oh, this guy's a natural right here! He loves Mondays! His Mondays are not so they love it! Oh.